What's up guys and welcome back to the G-Red Show, I'm G-Red. We gotta talk Argentina, we gotta talk Lionel Messi in the Copa America. What we saw from Argentina and Messi in their first match against Canada for the Copa America. I also want to touch briefly on Lionel Messi and his future and the rest of the Copa America thoughts, expectations and more. So let's jump right in. But first we're going to touch on Messi and why this could potentially be the end of Lionel Messi in his career. <laughs> So I'll be completely honest, uh, did Messi have a great performance? No, he didn't. I think he was very good at times, but I'm definitely noticing a little bit of decline. And I think the biggest thing I notice in Messi is he lost his step. He's not as quick as he used to be, which makes sense. He's 30, he's about to be 37. He's gonna beat guys at ease and he's an incredible passer. Just as good, I think, as he's ever been at passing. But let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, we all saw that Messi should have scored one of those breakaways. I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt on the first one just because there was a defender right there the entire time. Even after he shot and the keeper saved it, he tried to go left and the player was there. I understand why he didn't score. It was a lot harder than it looks, but the second one, you could see the defender caught up to him. He lost his pace, and he was about to get beat. He had to try and chip. I think it like skinned the top of the keeper's head. I honestly thought he would have fake shot, went right, passed it in. It was pretty unfortunate, I'm not going to lie. He should have scored. It is what it is, and all the Ronaldo fans, the haters, are going to say, Messi's finished, this and that. Just stop. It's just... Saying that, and if I see a comment, I'm going to laugh. It's just embarrassing. Everybody is going to miss an opportunity. Yes, he should have scored. I'm addressing it. We all know he should have scored. We're leaving it at that. The other thing I noticed with Messi is, and again, I'm going to relate him to Ronaldo here because Ronaldo is very, very, the way that his attitude is on the pitch, it shows that he cares. He's very much, he's very eccentric in the way that he acts, right? If he scores, even in the Saudi Pro League, if he scores a regular league goal, he's going to act like he scored, you know, a goal in the World Cup. It's, it's a little obnoxious, but he is extremely passionate and shows he wants to win. He's always trying to be the best and work the hardest and train the hardest and take care of his body. But that's his brand. He's selling that, right? Messi is not going to do that as much. He's very much reserved. Even if he does something great and he scores in the World Cup final, he's not going to go insane. He's going to keep his composure, stay cool, calm, and collective. Or if he's mad, he's going to usually internalize it. That's I think that's kind of the difference. Ronaldo usually will make it known that he's frustrated. Messi seems to internalize it. So I can't say he's not passionate, but I definitely don't think he's got the same passion as he did in the World Cup because he's won everything now, and that makes sense. But if you're going to play on the big stage, you got to play with passion and you got to want to win. You have to. And I'm not saying he doesn't, but I just didn't see it as much as I wanted to. Now, I know there were some negatives to Messi, but there was a couple times he had a couple great plays. He was great in the buildup. He actually had a great tackle where he won the ball. It was the time where towards the end of the match where Messi actually went down when the defender hit his knee. He actually stole the ball, won it, and it went right to Latar Martinez, who shot and the keeper saved it. Great effort from Messi. Amazing pass and assist from Messi to Latar Martinez. So, I mean, there was a lot of good. I wasn't overly impressed, but I wasn't under-impressed. I would give Messi probably a 7, 7.5 out of 10. That's what I would say. And I hope that, you know, this is just like the first match in the World Cup that Argentina played against Saudi Arabia when they lost. They didn't look poor, but they didn't look great. I think the best is still yet to come for them, but I wasn't overly convinced by Messi or the rest of the team. But when we look at Argentina, I think one of their major downfalls, and we saw it in the World Cup a few times, especially against France and the Netherlands, they're controlling the entire match, and then they do stupid things, they make stupid fouls or give the ball away, and they allow the other team to get back in the match. Stupid foul at the end of the match. It was like... Last few seconds in stoppage time against the Netherlands. I forgot who it was. I think it was Otamendi. He did a stupid foul, which allowed them to get that free kick, and Veghorst scored. They can't do that. Messi was trying to dribble out from the back against France. I think it was in regular time. Lost the ball, which led to France scoring one of those tying goals. They can't allow that to happen because they're so composed and they usually control so much of the match. They cannot do these stupid things and start letting the team get into the match. There was a moment in the second half when I forgot who it was. Silly foul right on the edge of the box. It wasn't in the box, which is why it wasn't called, but it should have been a free kick. That was a very clumsy challenge. 
you know, a half a step inside the box, and that could have been a penalty kick, and that could have changed the dynamic of the match. Those are my problems with Argentina. They don't focus in big moments, and they make stupid fouls and dumb mistakes like that in the most important times in the entire match. And they don't do that in the whole entire match, but it's like towards the end of the match when it counts, and they're trying to hold on to that lead, that these that these mistakes happen. I was a little surprised as well that Latar Martinez didn't start. If I'm being honest, I think he's better than Julian Alvarez, and I think he had a better club season than Julian Alvarez. He plays a lot more than Julian Alvarez. I understand Julian Alvarez had a really good World Cup, and I understand the chemistry, and maybe they wanted to roll with what they had. But the way that they played, I didn't like the attacking formation. I didn't like Di Maria on the right, and and Alvarez kind of floating in the center on the left and sometimes went to the right. I didn't like that. I didn't like Messi playing in the center. I think Messi still has to play on the right because he's so dangerous in the way that he plays. He can float in and play in the center. He doesn't need to play in the center when they have two really good center forwards in Alvarez and Lothar Martinez. I do think McAllister was pretty great at times. There was a couple times in their own half when Argentina was trying to build out of the back and he did a couple amazing one-touch passes. He's really developed and, and to be completely honest, he was a player in the World Cup. I'm like, I've never really even heard of this guy. And he's really making a name for himself, just not even for Argentina, but the entire world by the way that he plays. He's pretty class, and I'm I'm really excited to keep watching him. Now, further along, we go into the tournament. I also like Lissandro Martinez playing in the back. I think that's huge because he's one of those players that he is good, and he's been riddled with injuries. It's been unfortunate. He lacks size, which I think sucks because Argentina, their biggest weakness at times when they're attacking and on the defense is they're not great in the air. So they can when they play a team that's pretty big, I think that's going to be an issue for them. Besides that, I mean, don't get me wrong, Canada had a couple chances. There was one at the end of the first half, good save by Martinez. But Argentina, they should have won 4-0. 100% should have had at least one or two more goals. Lotaro could have scored one. Messi definitely should have had one. Di Maria missed the breakaway early on. So if both teams finish their chances, I think it ends up 4-1, 5-1 Argentina. But let me know what you guys think about this. Are you concerned at all with Argentina moving forward? What are your thoughts about this and Messi? And then just looking at everything else as a whole. I do think this is slowly the end of Lionel Messi. He did come out and state recently that this is probably his last club at Inter Miami. And I think his contract ends at the end of next year. And he said if he's healthy and his body feels good, he'll think about playing in the World Cup. But part of me thinks if he wins the Copa America, even if he loses, to be honest, part of me doesn't see him playing much longer. I don't know. There's something about it where I'm just not entirely sold. He already won the World Cup, and I feel like even if he doesn't win the Copa America, it's fine. He'll still retire on a high note, but if you go to the World Cup and Argentina doesn't make, you know, the semifinals and, you know, he doesn't have a great tournament, I don't want to say it's going to ruin his legacy because nothing will ever ruin his legacy. No one's ever going to pass Messi. He's the greatest overall footballer we've ever seen. It's You know, we're so blessed to be born in this time to witness it. But for that reason is another reason why I don't know if he plays in the World Cup and why I don't even know if he should. We obviously want to see it, but is it going to happen? I'm not sure. So let me know if you guys think he plays in the next World Cup. When we look at the Copa America, I'm a little less convinced from Argentina. I have to see a little more to give a really honest representation, but I wouldn't be surprised if a team like Uruguay won the Copa America just because they're young. They have a lot of talent, speed, pace, and I think they're going to be a tough team to take down. I'm actually really excited to see USA play Uruguay in the group stage. I think that's going to be one of the games of the tournament. I don't have high expectations for Brazil. I just don't think this is a very strong team, to be completely honest. It's one of the weakest Brazilian teams I've seen, honestly, in a very, very long time. I've yet to see Vinicius step up and see what he can really do for his country. Brazil's going to need someone to, to take over for Neymar and really carry this team. I mean, he's got potential to do it. I know he's not the greatest goal scorer, but... I just got to see more from him on the international stage. I got to see more from the rest of the team, but I do not have high hopes for Brazil. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised to see him get knocked out in the quarterfinal. The last thing I want to say is I just think it's kind of, because there's been a lot of talk, Messi was asked about it. Mbappe said something about, you know, the Euros is way harder than any other tournament like the World Cup. I think it's an ignorant statement. Obviously, Mbappe playing in the Euros, he's won a World Cup, lost in the World Cup final, but you're playing with the best teams in the entire world, the best teams from Europe, North America, South America, Australia, Asia, Africa. I mean, some of the best players in the world, we see it because they play on, like, for example, France. Their entire starting lineup almost is from Africa. Some of the best players in the world are from Africa. I mean, look at Mor- look what Morocco did. 
That team looks really good, and they made it to the semifinal in the World Cup. I think it's a really ignorant thing to say. The Copa is nothing compared to the Euros. The World Cup is nothing close to the Euros. I do think it's an ignorant thing to say, and I think a lot of Europeans have a little bit of arrogance to them just because the best clubs in the world are all in Europe, and a lot of the best countries are obviously a footballer in Europe. I think it's a pretty ignorant thing to say. Now, obviously, all of us as spectators, no one, I mean, even players, no one is able to play in the Copa America in the Euros and tell us a difference. But there's a lot of hate about it. And whoever wins the Copa America, it's just funny. They're going to get so much hate. Oh, they're, you know, this team would do nothing in the Euros. I just really hope whoever wins the Copa America wins the finalisma, like Argentina. They win the Copa America, win the finalisma, and then they win the World Cup. And people still have the audacity to talk bad about Argentina or the Copa America. I just think that kind of hate is extremely ignorant. But I guess this is just a rampage I got on. I didn't even intend to talk about this. So let me know what you guys think about all these different topics down below. What are your thoughts on Lionel Messi and his performance? And do you think this is his last tournament and slowly the end of his career? And then what are your thoughts about the Copa America? Who is the favorite at this moment? Who wins? If you made it this far, I appreciate you guys sticking around and watching. And I hope to see you guys back here next time on the G-Red Show.